All right, everyone, we start off today talking about Tim Scott being crazy enough to actually run in 2024. He had several weeks ago formed an exploratory committee, which is basically one foot in, one foot out. And I'm testing the water. Maybe I'll swim. Maybe I'm just going to go and sun myself. This, unfortunately, may be what DeSantis is about to do. We're not sure whether he's filing uh, to run and, and, uh, and actually run or whether he's going to form an exploratory committee. Thankfully for his uh, political career, what can be salvaged of it, uh, it looks like he's just going to get in. Tim Scott chose not to do that. That was a mistake. Uh, it makes you look indecisive, and no candidate should ever do that. Form your exploratory committee very quietly early on, and explore your options if you need to, if you want to be an indecisive goofball. Um, but just jump in when you jump in. Don't half-ass it. Voters aren't going to like that. Can you imagine like if Trump had said, well, maybe I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about whether I'm running in 2024. I'm going to form an exploratory committee for a while, and gets in. He wouldn't be riding in the mid to upper 50s in, in the GOP primary polling. He'd, be, he'd probably be in the 40s still. Um, it would make him look weak. People would be like, yeah, what the fuck? This is not characteristic of Donald. Something must be wrong. That would be the problem. Tim Scott really doesn't have a leg to stand on. And so I have a feeling that the people that he consulted with mainly told him, look, you get into the race, you gain some name recognition. You're not going to be nominated for the, the presidential race. You're not going to be the GOP nominee. But you can sell a book. You, you, we, we can manage to uh, work things out. We'll make it look good on paper, and you can grift ten, twenty million dollars uh, You may be able to turn that over into a run for some other office. At the very least, you can load up your campaign chest, because there are people that have TDS who also aren't really on board with DeSantis. It's like 15% of the GOP. Right now, you have not that packed a field, and so all you have to do is be able to debate. I mean, Trump won't show up, but you know, and DeSantis may or may not run. I mean, debate these all other also rands, and you can sort of compete for second place in in the money making grift scheme. Um, Ramaswamy just got in. Asa Hutchinson got in. Larry Elder got in. Nikki Haley got in. So there's four already. Tim Scott, the only one crazy enough to form an exploratory committee first. It made no sense. Um, just to be clear, I have a feeling that this is more about wanting some other office, um, you know, in the future, uh, about wanting to get attention, maybe pitch a single idea, and that's the other possibility. Sometimes when candidates get in, like Andrew Yang is probably the best example. His big thing was UBI. Nobody was really discussing it as an issue, even in the far left sense, for the most part, until Andrew Yang wouldn't stop talking about it. And so UBI, at least among the left, became uh, a core issue, a core potential issue. Now Yang gets to reap the rewards, because now that he's formed his own sub-political movement, he can get speaking fees, he can write a book on the topic, he can wait, he can heal, the media will talk to him, because he was the one that pushed the issue. It's not necessarily the most powerful and lucrative of careers, but it's a job. <laughs> he can make six figures, maybe seven, depends on who his friends and allies are, uh, simply rambling about one thing forever. By the way, this happens with virtually every issue and both sides of that issue. There are plenty of people that make their living promoting gun rights. There are plenty of people who make their living promoting gun control. There are people who promote green energy, so-called, and they make a lot of money doing that. There are people that speak for the fossil fuel industry and talk about, you know, the, the batteries are all with Chinese lithium and stuff like that, and they make money. There are also people that make their living uh, having severest TDS and making holy shit posts on Twitter. Rather sad uh, way to make your living, but they do exist. So he might inject an issue Yang style. Uh, or like Beto O'Rourke with guns, although he went a little bit further than that. He actually did look viable for a brief time. He lost at what he really wanted, and so then he tried to make up for it the last time around. His political career is effectively dead. He's basically let go of it. He was already in the House of Representatives there in uh, Texas, and he decided to give that up in exchange for a suicidal presidential bid just to get attention. It was amusing at the time watching him skateboard around and call himself a hacker. Yeah, Gen, Gen X, real great politicians that you're bringing forth right now. By the way, I think Yang is Gen X as well. There's something in the water, I suppose. Tim Scott's got no chance. Why would a person with no chance, why would their committee tell them, yeah, yeah, you, this is a, a bussin' idea, yeah, this is straight fire, dude. You should get into the race. 
Well, it's to make money. Those people around him get to have uh, campaign staff salaries and consulting fees and shit. They get their part of the grift. Tim Scott gets a bit of attention. In the end, I suspect that Donald Trump will be the nominee. Um, whatever happens in the general aside, Hong Kong, I'm sure it'll be perfectly fair and nothing will be fortified, everything will be fine. And there, there won't be any uh, sort of, uh, there won't be any uh, last minute efforts to uh, put Trump in a jail cell when the ballots are being inked or something like that. We will see some funny business in the 24 election because I suspect that Trump will be the nominee. If it wasn't him, yeah, it'd probably be a fair election between two controlled opposition candidates, Jeb out of nowhere or something. Tim Scott would sort of fall into the same category. Um, again, when you're, when you're at like 1% in the polling, is there really a reason even to jump in at that point? No, not unless you want cash. Ramaswamy, to his credit, has grown his uh, capabilities to four points. He's now, I think, slightly ahead of Nikki Haley. Those are the only two individuals that got in that have any real recognition. Right? By the way, Nikki Haley gets it from day one because of name recognition. Ramaswamy had to work for it. He's got his four points now in the aggregate, and he actually got it because he said things that were of interest to people. I would say Ramaswamy should be on the short list for uh, running mates, and, and that is what these people are running for. The only person who would get into the race at this point that has name recognition, a pulse in the polls, and actually would be running to win would be Ron DeSantis. Trump's already in. DeSantis is the only other one. Anyone else who gets in is doing it for money or to inject a political talking point or two or something like that. And they simply want to uh, uh, ride one another's dicks, basically. Uh, that's the only reason you would get in. There's no other reason for it. You want attention. You want money. Uh, and that's so, so Tim Scott, uh, along with all of these others, other than Abrama Swami, who seems to be going down the, the activist route more than anything, especially with regards to censorship and guns, which is fine by me, uh, pretty based. Um, uh, other than that, these other people, these also-rans, are getting in for a VP slot or money. So money or power. That's the only point. So... Now, wish him well. It took you two weeks to decide. You sound like Hillary Clinton. You have to have a focus group to tell you when to take a shit. Yeah, that's this kind of decisive leadership that America needs going forward into what may become a mega recession. That's about all. Peace out.